We'll now jump to the set third annoying feature that we're going to see really messes up all those happiness judgments we saw. And that's the fact that our minds are built to get used to stuff. We just kind of have these minds that kind of adapt over time and habituate. Again, since we think in terms of vision, we can see this really well in the concept, in the, in the uh, situation of perceptual adaptation. So have you ever been in a super dark room where you walk out into the light and all of a sudden you're like, the outside, like how is it like the brightest thing ever? What's going on? Well, your, your visual system has adapted to being in the dark. So much so that it just assumes the dark is going to be there. So when you get this contrasting thing, this bright thing, you're like, what is going on? This happens in the context of light. It also happens in cool ways in the context of color. And that's where I'll give you uh, your visual illusion in the context of absolutes for the day. So we'll see if this works. So bear with me here. So what I want you to do is to stare at this uh, image as much as possible. And what I'm going to try to do is to kind of habituate and let your color receptors adapt to assuming this color that you're looking at is just the color you see in the world. So be staring at it really, really intensely and so on. And then when I get rid of it, um, if this works, you should see a really brief after image of the opposite colors that come on. Your brain has assumed so strongly that those colors were there that as soon as they go away, it assumes that other colors might be there, even though it's just white. Um, here's a more timely one. I'm going to leave this on longer to see if it works. So stare at this image. You might not know who this person is. Stare, stare, stare. Eyes really big. Staring, staring, staring. She goes away. You can tell who it was. It was Beyonce, but anyway. This <laughs> you're supposed to do this with your screen closed. Anyway, and Coursera will have it, and it'll work out. But, but basically, this is the phenomenon of perceptual adaptation. Your perceptual systems, just in those few seconds, are just assuming, like, oh, the state of the world is just like, I see a reverse flag on the screen. That's just like the way it is. And as soon as it goes away, you're like, whoa, what's happened, right? But you're getting used to stuff over time. The phenomena is the same in the context of hedonics, in the context of what makes us happy. It's not like we just get a stimulus and it's there and we notice it all the time. We just get used to it. And this is this phenomena of hedonic adaptation. I'll give you a quick definition of this. This is this process of becoming accustomed to both positive stuff and negative stuff, such that the effects you get from them emotionally just like don't work as well over time. And this is the kind of thing that makes a lot of the awesome stuff we see not as awesome. And I love this little meme of the cat facing this awesome thing. The cat is saying, he's faced with all these hot dogs. He's saying, yes, I believe I'm going to enjoy this. And I feel like this is the kind of situation we face a lot. We see this hedonic stimulus that's awesome. We're like, I'm going to get this, and it's going to be awesome. And the more I get of it, like, the more awesome it is going to be. And the fact is, is that this is just wrong. This is just not the way it works. Um, and it doesn't work in part like that in part because of hedonic adaptation. The problem with all of these awesome things that once we get them, usually they tend to stick around. You know, we get a new job, you're going to be in that job for a while. You buy awesome stuff, a new car, a house, you meet the person of your dreams, you achieve these perfect grades, you get a certain GPA. Like These things stick around. You get used to them. They become the new normal. They stop bringing you the happiness that you expect, and they reset your reference point for the future. This is one of the reasons that when we get this stuff, it doesn't make us happy. But is this really what's going on? Can we see these effects? How about these kinds of effects in the context of money? Do we habituate to money? You might think, no, like if I had awesome money, I would love it forever. But you just saw the effects I talked about, which is that as soon as your income gets bumped up $1 more, you actually want $1.40 more, like a really particular role spot where you get these sort of form of hedonic adaptation. Um, there's an even better study that looked at this by Dutella et al., where they really looked at individual people at their salary adaptation over time. So they tracked people across almost 20 years in Germany as their salary went up and up and up, and they tried to see, are you getting used to it? And here's what they find. Here's people's salary. So this was like the 90s, like dot-com boom. People's salary was just like, whoop. And here's what their happiness looks like. It's just flat. You kind of just get used to it. That's the context of money. How about an extreme case in the context of money? Maybe like over time, there's such small changes you can get used to them. But what if you get a big windfall all of a sudden? What if you win millions of dollars in the lottery? Surely you would notice that, right? Surely you wouldn't get adapted to that. Well, Brickman and colleagues did a very famous study where they looked at lottery winners one year on, and they assessed their happiness. Lottery winners um, versus controls who did not win the lottery. What you find is lottery winners report about four out of six happiness, that seems pretty good, until you realize that controls who haven't won the lottery are at 3.82, statistically no different in that case. So even like this huge windfall, you think you're not going to get used to having a bazillion dollars, you actually just do. Um, this is also true in marriage, as you guys saw. I love this cartoon of the happy people who are just married, 
but then two years later, they're just married. <laughs> That's all they are, right? We saw this graph last time, but basically if you missed it last time, here's the graph of marriage satisfaction as you get to time zero of marriage, kind of life satisfaction goes up, but then by two years in, you're no statistically different, and then you're kind of, you just kind of habituate to your partner. They stay around, you just get used to them, just like perceptual adaptation. Um, what about one that's a little bit more close to home, this phenomena of going to Yale? Um, you guys have been at Yale for a while, most of you, so if you forget how happy you are when you first find out that you go to Yale. So to remind you, I went to uh, YouTube, where I'm, I was happy to learn that there's a lot of these accept college acceptance videos where people like film. This seems so anxiety provoking to me. I can't imagine that people do this, like take a video of themselves as they're clicking, but they are there. And if you watch them, those people are very happy to find out they got um, in. So this morning when you got up and you had like, as soon as you got up, you realized like you men's moment, you're like, wait, I'm a Yale student. Did you think, were you like, I'm a Yale <laughs> Holy crap, like, holy crap. Like, Probably you guys are laughing because nope. Why is this all the case? Well, the psychologist Dan Gilbert, who's this fantastic book called Stumbling into Happiness, has a really one, a great quip about this, um, where he notes that wonderful things are especially wonderful the first time they happen, but their wonderfulness wanes with repetition. That moment when you're like, I'm going to yell that first time you realize that, that is fantastic. But the subsequent moments, you just kind of get used to them. Um, he also has these examples that you guys are too young to realize, but he talks about the first time your partner says, I love you, is just like the best ever. But like last Tuesday when they say, I love you, it's just nothing. Or he notes the first time your, your child says, mommy or daddy, is like the best thing ever. But then like, you know, 17 years later, when you guys say mommy and daddy, it just loses its, its thing. Uh, but this is sad, right? Because we want to maintain the awesomeness of all of these moments. These things are going to stick around. We want them to remain as awesome, but as we get used to them, we just get kind of sad and bored over time, which is kind of sucky.